Hey guys, you are watching Blogo Vision. I'm Tatiana Spiteri and I cannot wait to discuss with you my personal preferences, my top five, yet kind of six of Malta Eurovision Song Contest, who I see as hopefuls, as the artists with the most potential, who have what it takes to take Malta to at least the final of Eurovision Song Contest 2024. Malta semi-finalists are so many, oh my god, 36, although last year it was 39, so it's kind of a <laughs> limiting themselves in a choice. And that probably is a good thing, because I cannot imagine how to choose among 40 artists, as Malta usually did before. It's already super hard to choose among, let's say, 20 or 30, but we're talking even semi-finalists are 36, in this case, 39 last year. It's incredible. My sure five include, first of all, our one and only Ryan Healy. Ryan Healy is known to Malta for X Factor, uh, as the winner of X Factor, and obviously he is quite a standout voice. He draws attention, yeah, he uh, manages to captivate, and the song that he wrote for this Eurovision um, contest, that's at least his hope, is made in a collaboration with a Swedish producer or songwriter, which makes me believe that uh, he's got quite some expectations, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had to pull some strings and make contacts with the right people in the industry who would give him an almost guaranteed formula of success. So let's hear a snippet of his song, Karma. I love the intro. It starts very Eurovision-like, from the silence building on, you know, slowly, just the piano and his voice. What a beautiful voice, what a silky, lovely voice he's got. You cannot deny it, guys, he's a talent. So soulful. I must say, though, I'm not a big fan of his high-pitched notes. Very catchy, he had a bit banal chorus. On my knees, begging please, you know, we've heard it a million times. You got me on my knees. Will he get Eurovision audience on their knees? And first of all, Maltese audience. <laughs> yeah, not a fan of his high pitches. It's like he can nail them, but at the same time, they don't feel as uh, unforced as his regular, a bit lower voice. Okay. So it's got potential as a great Eurovision hit. It's got a uh, radio friendliness in it, which I totally am for. And I think if the song is not radio friendly, there is little chance for it to win the contest. My concern here would be that I already see is just the, you know, lights onto uh, the singer, just the mic, you know, guy standing and singing. And that's that usually proves not enough if you are not <laughs> Salvador Sobralis. Because the song itself isn't enough to be the winner, winner, you know, it has winner sort of, you know, it has certain elements of a winning song, but so far it doesn't have all it takes to be in top 10, let's say, of Eurovision Song Contest. But all the best of luck to Ryan Healy. Last year he competed as well, he didn't make it to, he made it to top three, but didn't make it all the way to the first spot of multi Eurovision Song Contest. I think he's got what it takes this time, he really does. Now, my next and probably personal favorite, I cannot help it, guys, I love Matt Black. Yeah, M-A-T-T-B-L-X-C-K. This time Matt came up with a song which is called Banana, and it's not Give That Wolf a Banana. And they call that wolf, is your grandma, give that wolf a banana, give that wolf. Yeah, it's not that wolf and it's not that banana, but Matt Black is just having fun on stage of all the songs. This is his third entry, as far as I know, in uh, Eurovision Malta. And uh, this is the most relaxed one, kind of I don't give a damn, uh, you know, just uh, give me all of your attention, I want your eyes on me. <laughs> uh, vocally, not wow sort of uh, track, and uh, Matt has never, you know, gone for some pitches or Ryan Healy sort of. A temper, but that's not important. The important thing is that uh, Malta can be brave and make a choice in favor of something less serious. And I think Malta in general takes your vision a bit way too serious. So let's take a look at the snippet of it. Mm -hmm. A bit of dense start intro. 
very party like very party like malta is a party island it's full of djs guys you know have fun easy to understand the lyrics uh, it is latina vibes kind of yeah he likes latina in this particular case move to the left uh-huh uh-huh yeah, english that everybody will understand for certain nothing you know difficult here to <laughs> sing along to um mm -hmm. the pre-chorus is weak for sure i'm not a fan of it eat your bananas <laughs> You ain't your mama, eat your bananas, that's got such a sexual <laughs> interpretation that is so directed in your face, oh my god. Ah, tricky, tricky. Chiki Chiki takes me back to that Spanish song. Uh, Baila Chiki Chiki, El Roboco. El Chiki Chiki mola mogollón, no bailan en la China, también en la which was just fun for Spain but not so much fun for the rest of the audience it didn't get high scores this somehow like it's not the best Matt Black submission let's be honest in the last three years my favorite still remains come around but back then he was just it was his first uh, single ever ever and it was simply not enough to make it you know to the final of uh, to the final three uh, at least of Malta Eurovision Song Contest his second song up for me that's Malta's a big big loss not having sent him to Eurovision Song Contest and having chosen Basker that time although the guys are lovely nothing bad to say about them but that was simply not enough for Malta to progress to the final while Matt could have nailed it nailed it so down, down, down. One shot, two shot, down, down, down. this one is something that you would like in the recap very very much uh it is a bit yeah kind of latina cheesy it is a bit running on uh, success of many other songs altogether it has elements of maltese language in it i remember mela mela and we had name yeah it's hard for me to comment what chances it would have in eurovision song contest really but what i do think is that it deserves to be in top three of malta eurovision song contest and uh you know matt always deserves to be in top three no matter what he's put so much thought, effort, fun, feeling into his performances. It's always more of a play, you know, like than uh, just coming out and singing to the mic. Matt would be something just moving around the stage, having fun, connecting to audience. Uh, Eurovision likes that, you know, Eurovision fans would love to TikTok him to make this banana fun images, videos, whatnot. My third choice, and I'm very, um, you know, very much into minds about it, but I'm gonna name it, it's Franklin Kalea, and he's very unusual, uh, sort of a bit sadomaso, all kinds of leather black, Adam Lambert uh, delivery. I don't wanna be one more puppy in a I hadn't heard of him before, but he's well known in Malta and he's been in many local competitions and performances and festivals. I remember I was just a bit distracted, you know, from the songs, you know, that were playing before uh, him. And I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> I was like, first of all, what an outfit. Second, hey, wait a second. Despite all this sort of, uh, you know, dressed up uh, carnival kind of feeling, it still has uh, this, you know, voice that you cannot take away. The guy can sing. The guy can sing. The guy can nail it. Whatever notes he takes, oh my God, he blows my mind and he totally kills it professionally and well. Let me go. So you're first thinking, hey, this guy's not serious. He couldn't be good here. Second, you think like, hmm, hmm, okay. Okay, so that's a tough cookie. You know, that's not what you thought it would be. Sort of, let's discard the song next one. He's just dressed up in, you know, black uh, and saddle muscle sort of uh, outfit. No, we are talking, you know, we are talking vocal preparation. We are talking big ambitions. We are talking maybe putting on a different sort of, you know, um, image onto yourself to try and catch everybody's attention because from then on, 
you know, you can start seeing the actual vocals behind it, the actual talent behind it, the experience. He wants to experiment, you know, and I'm all for it. Let's listen to a snippet. Very pop uh, intro. And very Adam Lambert. <laughs> I like the pre-chorus very much. Now that's how you make a pre-chorus, Matt. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Woohoo! Ah, oh, so catchy. The chorus is so catchy, so catchy. Whoa, whoa, it's a bit cheesy if you ask me, but uh, makes it too poppy, sort of Britney Spears. But I don't... The chorus is super catchy, I do like it. It's uh, very rhythmical, uh, it's super dancey and uh, a bit retro sounding, but yeah, sort of like a hello from Britney Spears era. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. Probably because I'm from that generation which grew up on Baby One More Time and stuff, and Adam Lambert, um, I do enjoy, yeah, I do enjoy both the vocal, uh, skills here. I enjoy the songwriting kind of structure. I enjoy the pre-choruses, how they build into choruses. It's got what it takes, you know, not to win Eurovision, obviously, but um, if Malta, for whatever reason, decides to go with the less maybe usual or standard choice of Ryan Healy or maybe Matt Black in this case, um, I would sort of, I would like to see what happens, you know. I think this guy has uh, quite an unusual sort of appeal. I remember watching it and thinking like, why am I still watching it? Like all the other songs I sort of was like, mm -hmm, okay, I'm done with this one, let's take the next one. And this one really got me, you know, glued to the screen and I couldn't, you know, just stop. He's, he's quite uh, visually appealing, charismatic. He, you know, he commands it, you know, he looks you right in the eye into the camera, he knows the camera angles, which was very important for Eurovision. But let's move to my fourth choice and uh, since you know I prefer male vocals I've chosen three who are male vocalists and only now coming to my first impressive woman of the day my attention goes to Gay Latard yeah a very 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 strong vocalist about whom I didn't know anything before still have no idea where she came from who she is and uh, I, the thing I know is that she simply blew me away with the power of her vocals. Let's take a look. Let's uh, hear a snippet of the song. I remember her performance. Sort of half whispering, half singing at the beginning. It leads you in very nicely. A ballad. Obviously, but Eurovision always has a few ballads, doesn't it? Building up in power. I can feel by that by the end of it she'll go like full volume and capacity of her lungs. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's got this sort of, <laughs> she puts this you know, makes this effort, you know, uh, during the chorus to impress you with her vocal skills. I I would say just a bit more than I would want to. Yes, yeah, she sort of forces it, but you can see that she can easily nail it. Yeah, that's her comfort zone. It's just she likes it to, to be with a bit of this, yeah, sort of internal struggle representing um, touch to it. And I think it'll stop for now. Um, just the power of vocals blows me away. And the more you listen to the song, you see it progress. You hear that she doesn't fall to note. Like what a stunning vocal power. Um, but song-wise, it's neither here nor there. There is not much to sing along to. And even the chorus sort of passes by um, unnoticed in the sense that you notice only the voice, not the... Um, the melody, not something to, you know, uh, catch on to, yeah, to ledge on to. <laughs> and my fifth choice for today is a girls band called Erba, which means four in Maltese and in Arabic numbers, yeah. So um, I expected a, a girls band somehow, even when I heard the name, I thought that sounds like a girl band, like a Spice Girls, what are they for, right? So 
yeah, it sounded to me like we are in for some uh, audio uh, treat, so to say. And I wasn't mistaken, girls really blew me away with their harmony, with their preparation, dedication, and this ability to listen to each other and sing in unison while sort of not over outperforming each other, you know. You know how they know how to keep it together. Yeah. Erba with the song Sirena. Let's remind ourselves of the song. What a jungle sound that was. Mm -hmm. I'm the water, I'm the sun. We're all children of nature, girl. Interestingly different, contrasting voice. The girls are very together. The fire ignited, desire. Although fire desire is nothing new in lyric, lyrics, in terms of lyrics, yeah, but... Cheesy, love, love, peace, peace, the pre-chorus. The chorus is something to remember. Hey, yeah, uh, they, um, come on, come close to me, yeah? It has a bit of Maltese as well, suddenly, in the chorus. And then it's la la la. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that la 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 has usually quite some winning power in Eurovision. So if Malta decides to send the girls, it might be that they don't do bad, you know, depending on what performance they stage. I'd say if it's just for girls singing and that's it, you know, just the vocals would not let them progress far in Eurovision final, unfortunately. I mean, in Eurovision altogether, um, if they get chosen, that is. But uh, I see the potential in this to make a nicer sort of standout staging to surprise vocally as well as visually. And um, there is room for, you know, there is room for thought, there is room for growth, there is room for staging. And uh, girls seem to be quite natural and professional. Uh, singing in multi revision song contest live isn't easy at all. I do not often like how the music sounds much lower, much quieter than their voices. And imagine the nerves and that they are not singing in a closed room. They are singing with a lot of people looking at them at the same time, you know, as they are being recorded. So I believe super nerve-wracking experience it was, you know. So bravo to girls who didn't let their vocals down and, you know, are wearing the crown. <laughs> and as number six, even though I wanted to choose only five, but I felt like, oh, my hands are tied. I cannot just choose five. I think among this year's submissions, there are a couple of surprising ones from female performers as well as male. Uh, and uh, I was blown away by the concept, not as much by the song, but by the concept of one apparently new multi-singer, Karen Duff or Karen Duff. Uh, that is not Hilary Duff, you know, and that was something that I think put with the right staging can be just what the doctor ordered. You know? So this to me was sort of a hello from the uh, Fifth Element movie, you know, sort of Matrix meets Malta. I don't know, <laughs> Matrix and Malta. Let's take a look at the snippet of the song. Breaking Bad. Dance intro. A bit shaky vocals, the girl is nervous. Well, uh -huh, the verses is, you know, uh, quite, the first verse is very simple, not much to say about it. She's got a cycle or a cycle in her head. A stunningly looking woman, by the way, undressed in the end. Uh huh. She needs a lot of uh, helping vocals in the back, but that's fine with Eurovision. Even some pre-recorded vocals are fine. Mela, Mela. <laughs> Suddenly, that is Maltese Mela. This, yeah. So I was like, hmm. <laughs> Because here the girl suddenly gets this power from out of nowhere, becomes the queen of the world, you know, of the dance club. I really don't know what's going on melody-wise here. I remember my first thought was like, yeah, this like melody suddenly without much, you know, going on is a bit confusing. 
uh, before the second verse starts, there is this big break, yeah, I would say at least what, 10 to 12 seconds, which is quite unusual yet at this early stage of the song. Um, but uh, there is something in it. It's not something I would easily sing along to, none of us, I guess, but uh, that's not the point. The point is to impress, you know? The point is to just, you know, sort of uh, create your bizarre world if you want to be that, uh, you know, creature from Fifth Element. <laughs> I think I also like that the girl is redhead and like so different from everybody else's, you know, like um, self-presentation. So in this uh, multi song contest, I think uh, the final staging will be quite a surprise in many of the performances, uh, including uh, our Karen Duff. Well, good luck to Karen. I really don't know how public can take it. I do not think it's a judges particularly a winner, but I think it could be a people's top five. You know, it could be... Uh, the choice of televoters, and uh, I think you should give this young singers a chance. You know, there there are too many you know already established singers in Malta who keep going again and again, or their sisters or brothers. You know, take part in Eurovision becomes sort of a family thing rather than giving road to new talents. But I wanted to share my thoughts. Uh, which of them do you share? Which of my favorites are your favorites as well in Malta Eurovision Song Contest? Who stood out for you? Who maybe I overlooked? Yeah, let me know in the comments and see you soon in our future videos. Bye!